night, wherever you are in the world. Hello from all of us Mavericks at Cloudways. Right now, I've got Jan Koch with me here. Hi, Jan. Yes. Cheers. Hey, Hello. Petra. Hey, Vicente. Hey. And today, we've got uh, a fabulous guest. It's uh, my friend. I'm proud to call him my personal friend, Vicente Sanchez Jurado who's my neighbor in, in Valencia, in beautiful Valencia. Hello, Vicent. Hello, 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 Pizza. Hello, Jan. How are you doing? Very doing well. Fantastic. Very happy to be, yes, um, uh, very happy to be here with you today. Now, we are going to talk about accessibility today because the webinar is a part of our series on accessibility that we're doing for Cloudways. Thank you, Cloudways, for hosting it because it's a subject that's very close to my heart. So, but we are actually touching on an aspect of accessibility uh, that's very specific and it's vision because, as we'll find out right now, Vicent is particularly uh, expert in uh, vision science. Science vision? Vision? Science of vision? Vision. <laughs> Is that the vision from Marvel, by the way? Um, well, we call it um, vision sciences. So vision, vision sciences. Yes. Yeah, okay. So here's your opportunity to introduce yourself, Vicente, and tell us uh, who you are, how you got here, and why vision sciences are so important to you. Well, uh, thank you, Pizia. Uh, thank you, Jan, for for this opportunity. Um, this is my first time speaking English for a webinar, so I am really, really excited and a bit nervous, but I will try to do my best. Well, uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I am a, an, an optometrist, and uh, uh, I have studied... Um, mm -mm, sorry, I am getting... Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no worries. Science of vision. <laughs> That's it. Vision sciences. I keep yeah. saying it wrong. Vision sciences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, vision sciences. Uh, well, as as you were saying, uh, I have a uh, I have a studied optometry and vision sciences. I have a PhD on on this topic, and uh, uh, I am also a, a web developer. So, uh, trying to find my my place and trying to. Um, to take advantage of my of my skills, I came up with uh, with a, a decision focus on web accessibility because you are mm, working with with uh, people with visual impairment, so it, um, it's related and you can you can uh, help with all the knowledge that you have in, on vision sciences. Yes, and I am really excited. Can't wait to. Uh, see the presentation that you've prepared for us because I saw part of it, a, a smaller version, in Granada. Uh, when was it? 2019 or 18? Yeah, 2019. 2019. When we yeah. could still meet up and uh, go to WordCamps. And it was such a good presentation because a lot of it has overlaps with good design. You know, it's some, something that has come up often, hasn't it, Jan, in our previous webinars in yeah. this series about accessibility is that when you apply principles of good design, you are already probably being accessible in some way, but it's absolutely you're fascinating. you better results from the conversion rate perspective as well. Absolutely. And what's really interesting, uh, and I'll shut up and let you show us, Vicente, because <laughs> is, is how is much more relevant than we think because people there's a there's actually an article by by uh, uh, Rian Ritveld who was another one of our guests yeah. and it's in in in, in commas um, blind people don't visit my website and obviously the article is about the opposite it's about the fact that yes blind people do visit your website and I think that you're gonna uh, show that to us. So I actually have a really good story to share before we dive into the presentation too. Um, mm -hmm. Two days ago, I was meeting with a business friend here from my local area. He's in the fitness space. He sells these calisthenics parks. So he constructs those parks and then sells them to uh, administrative offices, police departments and stuff like that. And we were like looking the, at... 
the parks that you can like um, that, that you can exercise machines, then, right? exercise machines yeah, that where, you find where, outside. Where you do okay. like the, the, the pull up Public bars and, and stuff like that. The the outdoor parks he he builds those. And we were looking through one of my funnels because he now wants to do online marketing, and I wanted to show him the concept of how a funnel works. And we had this uh, blue background area on my page with a green CTA on it with, with my brand colors for Virtual Summit Mastery. <laughs> and he was like, I don't even see the green. I don't realize that. And it, it the, the tones of the colors, they work together really well. And it actually stands out. When you see the page, it, it works okay. It was designed by Dear Designer, and they, they built the colors so that it works. But his perspective was, you have blue. You need the exact opposite color of the color wheel that's orange. Why don't you put an orange button on the blue text? And I was like, I've made this mistake before. My friend Picha almost crucified me for doing <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, There's that's, so, that's so much common. lack of knowledge in this area. So I'm super happy yeah. that we got you on, Vincent, to, Vincent, to talk about this. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'll try to to explain things from a scientific perspective and um, to to correct uh, false uh, myths or beliefs about these topics. So, um, right. whenever you want. Yeah, you can. There's a share button. Okay. At the bottom share of your button. screen, you should be able to find that. I, uh, we should have tested it, Jan. Oh. We didn't test it. We haven't done hope. Yes, there you go. Perfect. It's great. Vincent is a pro, so it works out of the box. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, I always uh, have this 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 slide for for introducing myself, but um, it's not necessary because every time people um, makes a great introduction introduction of myself. So, well, uh, as as I said. Some minutes ago, I have a PhD in optometry and vision sciences, and I am also an accessibility consultant. And today we are going to talk about, uh, it's not in, no. Visible is marketable. How to design a website everybody can see. Well, everybody, everybody, not everybody, because um, there are some groups that have uh, uh, heavy impairments, so it's not possible to help these people through um, a good design, but um, if we get something, a, a good design that um, allows um, uh, a good experience or it provides a good experience for the, the majority of people, I think that, that will be more than enough. Well, as... Um, Can as I just a, also yeah. say, say <clears throat> straight away, yeah. look how easily readable the typeface that Vicente has chosen is his typography is so important, and this is a yeah. such a great typeface to use. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 don't worry. I'm going back. Now this is visible, and you can read it. It's not difficult to see because I am using the highest contrast, black letters over a white background, but like a small spoiler. I'll talk about physiology driving design. But first of all, we are visual beings. What's the first thing that we do each and every day? The first thing that, that everybody does uh, on mornings is to open our eyes. That's yeah. the first thing. And when we hear, smell, touch, or taste something unexpected, Instinctively, we look for it with our eyes. So it makes sense to say that vision is our main information input. Well, I have to admit that uh, design is not one of my strengths. But if we apply, if I apply a bit of color to this slide, um, it will be a bit more appealing. Okay, it feels more appealing. But as I said, design is not one of my strengths. Well, you know, hardcore designers really like minimal design. So I, I loved the previous, you know, the previous slide was fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, Thank you, Pizza. Well, as I was saying, we are visual beings. So if um, you want to sell something, you need to catch the eye. And for that, you should ask yourself, is your design easy to perceive? 
buyers must be able to see whatever you are, are trying to sell, but you can judge your, uh, your design for many reasons, because you know your design, you know the ideas that generated that design, you know your intentions, and what is even more important is that you can perceive it, is that even if you can perceive it, it does not necessarily mean that everybody will, uh, will perceive it. So let's talk about physiology driving design. Visual phys physiology will be, will be the best guide to answer that question about your design. First of all, let's talk about the visual system. I promise I'll try to be um, quick and not so boring. <laughs> this is the, the visual system. The visual system is the, it's informed by the eyes and the, the, the retina, the optical nerve. And so this is a, a cross. Yeah, so, this, so is a, this is a, a, a section from the top. A yeah, section it, from the top. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was Thank interpreting. You, well, and uh, the, the main uh, actor of this, uh, of the visual system is, of course, the eye. We can think about the eye as, uh, as it's uh, like a biological camera. And these are the parts of the eye. We have the optical part of the eye, cornea, pupil, iris, and crystalline lens, and the sensory sensitive uh, part of the eye, the retina and the optic nerve. Let's imagine a simple camera. When we have a camera, we put an object in front of the camera and we record an image. We get through the, the optical, uh, the, the objective, the optical part of the camera uh, generates an image of this object. But if the object is not in the appropriate position, you, uh, your, your, your image will not be generated over the, the, the camera sensor. And that generates a blurred image, an, an out of the focus image. And this happens also with the eye. If the object is not in the appropriate position, the, the image that is formed on the retina will not be focused. So imagine a simple eye. The point the exact point where you where you have to put the object in order to to get a, a sharp uh, image on the retina is known as remote point, and, and this helps. Uh, this is useful to um, classify um, the eye. So options that we have uh, that we can find is that the remote point is in front of the eye, at a close intermediate distance. Another possibility is to have the remote point very, very far from the eye. And the third possibility is to have the remote point behind the eye. I know it's weird and I know it doesn't make sense, but that's how it is. How, how does it work? How does behind the eye work? It's difficult, but um, imagine when you have um, uh, a good camera, you can defocus your object when you are trying to focus the, 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 the infinite, you can defocus it and you are not going to get a good image. Why? Because at that moment, your remote point, the remote point of the camera is behind the camera. It's difficult and I don't want to go that way because um, we will have to invest so much time. Yeah, but let's not digress, yeah. Okay. Just, just, just trust me. Trust me. Well, yeah. these three possibilities define mm, the refractive errors or the, the the normal problems with vision. When the point is in front of your eye and at a close distance, we are talking about myopia. When your remote point is uh, very far from the eye, we are talking about emetropia, which is normal vision. And when your remote point is behind the eye, we are talking about hyperopia. Well, the classic refractive errors are myopia and hyperopia and normal vision. Well, 
Let's make a quick explanation about what are what does it mean diopter. Diopter is the unit for uh, expressing optical power. And uh, as a quick uh, um, as a quick explanation, if your remote point is half a meter in front of your eyes, you will have two diopters of myopia. If it's one meter in front of your eye, one diopter. Two meters in front of your eye half a diopter. If it's in the infinite, you will have zero diopters. And this is the formula. It's not important, it's not relevant in now, but uh, this uh, helps to understand what does it mean to have four diopters of myopia. It means that you can see sharper images of objects placed being uh, 25 centimeters from your eye. Okay. This is so useful i never knew this it's like it's a complete sort of light bulb moment thank you so much this is brilliant to know thank i had you, no Victor. idea it meant this this is great thanks thank you thank you you're welcome well let's go back to our previous uh, graph well am i saying that the eye can focus only at what distance no because we have this lens inside the eye. The crystalline lens can change its shape and change the total refractive power of the eye, which means it can increase the, the, the power of the eye in a process known as accommodation. And this process allows us to focus objects that are closer than the remote point. So, in a very simplistic um, way, we can we can say that we have an interval of uh, sharp vision between the remote point and the near point, thanks to the accommodation of the eye. So, I have bad news. This ability, the accommodation, mm -hmm. diminishes with age, and at certain point around uh, the 40s, between 40 and 45 years of age, arouses the presbyopia. And presbyopia means that the eye can make or sustain that accommod accommodative effort required to focus near objects. Mm -hmm. For example, we can, we can see this, this situation. This could be a normal eye that has a, a, a relatively wide amplitude of accommodation and an eye with um, with uh, presbyopia has a narrower space for of um, sharp vision i well, tell you what some of us are unlucky and it happens before you even get 40. i had perfect vision all my life and then i can tell you the exact moment when i knew mm -hmm. that this had happened because i was in venice uh, looking for a party at night and I was mm -hmm. trying to read a map. This was before smartphones. I was 38 and I was trying to read a map and it was impossible to read the map and I couldn't get to the Mexican party and I, I was so angry. Ah! And that's when it happened to me. So it was, it was a bit unlucky. It was, it was before I even got 40 to 40. Yeah. Which, yeah. So it means yeah. not, not, you don't need to be old. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. But probably is that because uh, you have hyperopia. Am I right? Hyperopia, so that I uh, that I could see very far. Yes, yes, absolutely. Hyperopia uh, is um, when you have two diopters of hyperopia. That means that to focus very far objects, you need to do an accommodation effort of two diopters, while a normal yeah. eye. Does not have, does not need to 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 make this effort. So, people with hyperopia will um, show problems with near vision before the forties. So for me, it makes sense more or less. Yeah, well, it did. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. Um, is this a problem? No, it depends on the lifestyle of each person. In this situation. This person won't have a pro any problems because the computer and the and the, the smartphone are inside 
the uh, he, his or her possibilities of, of um, clear vision. But when we are talking about presbyopia, we have a problem because the near objects fall outside this interval. And uh, it's quite common when you see people uh, trying to read them things and they have to take um, their yeah, smartphones. That's my parents, yeah. Like that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they do this. Yeah. Oh, I can, I can read it. Mm, my, my arm is not so long enough. Yeah. It's a classic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this is not uh, presby presbyopia. This not stops here. It goes worse. I'm afraid, but this is a reality. Eventually, the progression of presbyopia stops when the remote point and the near point collapses. And we are, uh, go back to the, the, the first example of the simple eye. An eye with uh, total presbyopia can focus only at one distance. Uh, that distance is its refractive power, uh, refractive errors, excuse me. They are um, remember the big picture of whoops, the big picture of this is for subjects below forty years for below the forties we have three options three possibilities they are they have normal vision emetropia so they have no problems with vision they have myopia so they will complain about bad distance vision and if they have hyper hyperopia they will not have any complaints in general, in general. But around the 40s, the situation changes. Normal vision now, people with normal vision now complains about bad near vision. People with myopia still complains about bad distance vision, but they do not complain about bad near vision because they take off their, their glasses and they can read. Depending on the amount of um, of myopia, they will they will bring objects uh, very close to the eye, but they will be able to read. And people with hyperopia complains about bad near vision, and eventually they will complain also about bad distance vision, depending on the amount of of presbyopia. But the question is, how many people will complain about these things? The answer can be found in the World Report of Vision on Vision of the World Health Organization. In this report um, that was published in 2019, it says that in the world, more than 2.6 billion of people have myopia. That is more or less one third of the global population. And at least 1.8 billion with visual, visual impairment, uh, complaints about presby presbyopia. The projections for 2050 are that 4.9 billion, which is which will be at that moment the, the half of the humanity, will have myopia. So that is insane. Yeah, a that lot is, of people. It's essentially That's, half of at least half of the people visiting yeah. our websites. Yeah, so well, we will have to think about these profiles, these different profiles. That, that's why the fonts are getting bigger everywhere. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. that's the reason. That's the reason. Well, so I think we. Uh, this is um, a lot of people, so um, it's a good opportunity to uh, taking take into account how to optimize designs for people with a slight slide or um, weak visual impairments well but about uh, about local data um, you will have to search for your local area mm, the the who is not providing uh, data um, for for countries for example so um, it will change from country for from country to country but about presbyopia we don't need that data because we can search it here in populationpyramid.net. In this in this web page, you can see the population pyramid of the world and different countries. So with the 2019 data, 
the 36.2% of the global population has presbyopia, which is the result of counting from 40s to plus than 100 years old. More or okay. less, one third. Yeah. Is there a is there a re need to have gendered data in this case? Because it seems like it's very similar. I mean, I know in things like uh, color blindness, gender mm -hmm. is in, sex is important, but yeah. in this case, does it does sex matter much? Because no, they're not, for, there's not much of a difference. Yeah, for vision, no. No, but um, that's how they provide uh, the, the results. They, they, just, they, they split, just, oh yeah. they split uh, population by, by gender. So, But you, you, you can count 40, 45, blah, 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 and you make the math and you get this value. More than wow. one third of the po population have presbyopia. If they are lucky enough to have the, amount, the, the right amount of myopia, they will not complain about near near distance near distance vision but okay but what does it happen in other countries for example in uk in uk is more than 50 percent of the population and yeah. now Peter, uh, look at this what about spain it's almost 60 percent of the population wow. has are, are inside the possibilities of finding presbyopia wow well, so it's a lot of people and we will have to think how to help them to uh, take advantage of our designs. So for this, I'm going to focusing on explaining how, to, how do we measure visual performance. And the most important measure is the visual acuity. This measure is the ability to detect separate or recognize small details. Why are there um, three different words? Because we have three different options. Detect just means to uh, detect a small point. So the size of this point will be related to your visual acuity. Separate means uh, detecting the separation of two objects. This size is the same as this size. And recognize is related to detecting a feature inside a, 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 a geo, geometrical form. In, the, in these three cases, the, the size of the detail is exactly the same, but mm, I think these three tasks are not equivalent because this object is much more bigger than this one. So it's one of those things that it's so interesting because if you had asked me, I would say that the distance here, that this is bigger than this. Sorry, you can't see what my mouse is doing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no that uh, the, the, on the, the image on the right, the recognize, recognize image that the gap between in the middle mm -hmm. is wider than the gap uh, than the size, the, the diameter of the of the circle, but also actually now come to think of it, I would say that the widest is the one in separate, but they're the same. Yeah, uh, to tell so you the same because I made in this 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 drawing. The, well, this is so interesting though because it really dictates how nitty gritty we can go with our designs and especially for call to actions how fine the details can be yeah 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 and as i said this is the most important mm, metrics for measuring visual, visual performance because uh, um, in general in the clinical practice we have chosen the recognized task because we can uh, use letters we can design letters to match this task, uh, we are uh, um, in general we measure visual acuity with uh, letter letters. How do we construct these letters? Well, in theory, we use a grid of five um, five um, units. Uh, we we draw this 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 kind of um, square. Some letters like the E or the C are really easy to adapt to the system. 
And uh, in the beginning, we, 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 we use this kind of letters. I have one here. Now, let me take a piece of paper. Well, this letter, it's an E. And uh, for people who can't, uh, who don't know the name of the letters or who can't uh, communicate properly, we, what we do is to turn the position of the E. We give different options and we ask where is, where, where are the gaps of the E? So they have to say it's right, left, up or down. But this is uh, this is quite objective. It's an objective way to measure the visual acuity. But people mm, don't. Uh, some people don't feel it uh, natural. So that's the reason why we use this kind of optotypes with no more or less normal letters. These are, these are not normal letters because the C is not related to a real C. And uh, not all the letters um, are equivalent or have the, the same uh, visibility. But well, we use um, letters because for people it's easy to understand that if they can see small letters, they will be able to read small, uh, small letter sizes. But that's not 100% um, true. Let me show uh, our, our results of an experiment by Lege and, uh, and his collaborators. Sorry, this is in Spanish, but this means letter size and this means uh, reading speed. In this experiment, what, they, what the researchers did is to show different uh, letter sizes and measure their reading rates, the, the reading speed for the different sizes. And the results are very, really, really, really interesting because for small letter sizes, the reading speed is very low. Well, it's not surprising. When the, when the, when the, the, the letter is so small, it, it's very hard to, to read it. For big letter sizes, the reading speed is also low because you need to move your eyes to scan all the other letters. But what is more interesting is that for a wide variety of sizes, this graph shows a plateau, which means that the reading speed is almost constant for a, a big amount of different sizes. In particular, for when considering uh, when we are um, for 40 centimeters, this uh, this represents, I think it's, yeah, it's between 1.4 millimeters and 14 millimeters of letter size. But what is letter size? Is it the size of the body in points? No. In general, I have seen that that people um, say is that uh, the, the the best size for for letters in in a web page or the smallest size should be twelve points. But for me, it doesn't make sense. Why is that? Because the body size is not related with the actual size of the letter. The body size uh, includes white space that we cannot measure. So when I was saying that the optimal sizes are between 1.4 millimeters and 14 millimeters, I am referring to the X height, which is the, the, the height, the, this physical size that we can measure. Well, and this uh, changes from letter to letter um, for different fonts. For example, this is the, the, the Rubik font, this is the Times New Roman, and this is the, the Arial. Oh, sorry. I think my 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 computer mouse. Can you see my computer mouse? Yep. Yeah. I'm not sure. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. We well, can. All these three letters have the same body size, but in the practice, Times New Roman is a smaller. So don't pay so much attention to rules recommending. Um, body sizes and focus on the actual size of the letter. So the first tip of 
this uh, this stock is remember bigger is better size matters in that sense yes yeah totally totally <laughs> totally so then as you say jan uh, uh, now the every day we see bigger phones but it's yeah. because of this is the reason because bigger is better now let's move to another um, ability which is called contrast sensitivity and this is the ability to detect an object I, oh, sorry, this is and, no, it should be an. Ability to detect an object in a scene in base of its luminance. Luminance is the amount of light that the, that, that color is, is um, uh, emitting from the display. Look at this example. This letter is the, has the, the biggest contrast, black over white. If um, we lighten the gray, the contrast drops. So my question is, which one is the most easy to detect or to recognize? This one, the left one, the black one. And which one is the most difficult to see? This. Yeah. But we have to take into account the background color. If I change the background, the situation changes. And the same applies for colors. But contrast is not related with uh, the color itself. It's related only with the amount of light that it's emitting the display for that color. So does, does it mean that when we have two uh, color, let, let's say a background color and a front color, they can look different on different displays based based on where we are watching. Yeah, but then this, that's something related to the display itself with the technology. Yeah. Mm, well, mm, I'll talk about that later on 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 this talk. But uh, yeah, mm, different displays show different colors, and uh, the contrast ratio could change from display to display. So mm, just don't be so so i don't know how to say it so so exigent with with the <laughs> the the aspect of the color because so strict, it will so strict. Yeah. thank you Th thank you Pizza. Yeah. well but you, you know that one of the first rules uh, as when you learn how to design one of the first thing things that, that you're told is designing black and white or grace and grayscale because yeah, yeah, yeah. things need to be visible in, in black and white and, and grayscale, don't don't rely on color. This is a number one rule with design. So as we were saying earlier, best practice often helps accessibility as well. Yeah, yeah, that's totally right. Uh, we need to focus on the grayscale, on the luminance levels. Well, when we measure the contrast sensitivity, the minimum contrast, for different um, sizes, we will get a plot, something like that. When we plot contrast over size, we get this um, shape. And why is this is so important? Because this is crucial for, for visual sciences, because this is the frontier between the visible and the invisible. Let me explain. Imagine this. Um, this means thicker. When we are close to 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 this side, we are to we are to uh, talking about a thicker stimulus. When we go to when we move to the to the right, the stimulus uh, thickness uh, diminishes. For this thickness, we will need this contrast in order to detect the stimulus. A lower contrast means that we, we will not be able to detect the stimulus. Bigger contrast assures, uh, assures us that, that we will perceive the stimulus. When we determine this, this, this um, frontier between the visible and the invisible for all the possible sizes of the stimulus, we generate this shape, which is called contrast sensitivity function. 
and allows us to predict the visual performance or the, and the visual quality of uh, a person. But is it necessary to use this kind of tool for, uh, for our designs? No, thankfully, no. We can go to color contrast checkers that will uh, help us um, to generate different color combinations and we will not have to think about the sizes and all this stuff that I was saying. Well, for example, I like this one, but you can, you can go and use um, many different options. I like this one because you put here, um, well, let me change because we will see it better here. You specify here the foreground color and the background color. It doesn't matter because the, the results of the calculation will be the same if you swap these values. And the calculator provides a, uh, this value. You don't have to worry about that value. It's a reference, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean nothing for your design. What is more important is to check this, um, this, uh, this kind of traffic lights. If it says fail, that means that that combination is not good. For example, this kind of blue over a white background is not a good combination for normal text. But it could be a good combination for large text or graphical objects in your design. In the previous slide, I had a different color, a dark blue. The value was, the contrast ratio was almost 16. And this combination, it's good for all the possible options. Well, so uh, instead of worrying about um, contrast sensitivity function, just use a color contrast calculator. And uh, that will be more or less enough. Enough? Why? Because these um, tools take into, uh, into account what's normal text and large text. And what is that? Well, we have to go to WCAG. I know Rian uh, told you about WCAG. It's uh, the, the contrast web content accessibility guidelines. And uh, among all the success criterions, there are three that talks talk about contrast, graphical contrast, the 1.4.3, the 1.4.6, and the 1.4.11. And they do not specify what's, what does it mean, normal text, but they say that large text is text with uh, of um, 18 point or 14 point and bold. But in general, between 1.2 or um, 1.5 M's units. And this um, takes into account this effect of the contrast sensibility. And is that small objects need mar much more contrast than medium objects. Okay? So, oh, and, um, so, so for instance, with the, uh, if you go back, uh, yeah. the, the one before, so, uh, no, that, when if we fail the normal size text, but yeah. we decide we decide to use that color only for big text, then it's fine. We can do that, not a problem. Just as long yeah. as we don't use it for normal text. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what this means. That in this combination yeah. you can use it for headings, but not for normal text. And uh, yeah. the the the. The, the values, the, the, the cutoff of um, which means normal text and large text is this. Large text, large text is 18 point or 14 points and bold style. Okay. So tips that we can extract from contrast uh, sensitivity is that, first of all, use contrast ratio calculators. Don't waste your time with other options. Remember, minimum contrast depends on letter size. Small sizes will need much more contrast. And uh, an extra thing, visually impaired people need more contrast than normal people because 
different kinds of um, problems that can affect vision will lower the sensitivity to contrast. Well, next ability is the visual field, and this is really important. We usually don't pay so much attention, but visual field is the area that can be seen with one eye while staring at a fixed point. So it's the, 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 the amount of space that you, can, that you can see without moving your eyes. And more or less has this shape. This is, uh, this is the right eye of a person. Mm, this is not a circle because here in this position, we find the, now, the nose. So the nose um, occludes the vision of this area. Well, first of all, this orange, um, orange um, shape, it's the blind spot. And this is um, something shocking, but in our, in our visual fields, we have two blind spots, one per eye. This, this, uh, this represents the optical nerve. In that area of the retina, there is no vision, but we don't perceive a black dot on that area because the brain um, fills in, fills the information that it's missing with the, the the surrounding information. So the brain is always tricking us in respect to vision. Well, the central area, this is the in the, the the target point. The central area represents the maximal visual acuity. Here, the the cells. Uh, responsible for for this uh, for the visual acuity are are really really tight packed are really packed um, very very tight so we have the maximum quality in the center of the visual field when we move to the periphery uh, the visual acuity drops and uh, uh, for example the central 10 degrees of the visual field are used for reading while the 20 central degrees are used for, recon re for the recognition of objects. At 30 degrees, we lose the vision of color. So this means that the periphery of the, of the visual field is in black and white or grayscale. And nobody notices it, but that's how it works. A proof, um, I can, uh, we can prove um, that um, at least the, the, the drop in the visual acuity uh, works because uh, it's, it's really easy to, to test this. When you are staring at the point, try to, uh, for example, um, try to focus on this red square. If you are staring to red, this red square, can you read these letters? Without <laughs> moving your eyesight? No. Not a chance, no. It's not possible. No way. I, I, I came across this uh, blind spot thing when uh, I, I did a presentation on, um, on attention, you know, how design for attention. And so I was aware of the existence of the black spot. And there's other, other things, other sort of exercises that you can try, and they are incredible. Incredible! You just—it's amazing how yeah, it works. Definitely. And let's do another experiment. Where is my pen? It's here. Well, take a piece of paper and draw an X and uh, a small circle, or less, like this. Can you can you see this? Well, uh, let me increase the thickness. I was mute. You're muted, Jan. There you yeah. go. Yeah, this. now we yeah. can see it better. Okay. Now, uh, focus on the X. And you have to do this. Close one eye, focus on the X, and move the paper. While you're staring at the X, while you're maintaining your, your, your gaze on the X, you will find that at certain position, the circle will disappear. 
Because <laughs> we need we need to do it. I don't have a pen, I, but yeah. I don't anyway, have you paper can... here. I have a paperless office. <laughs> well, another option is that the, I can hold this in front of the camera yeah. and you can yeah. move towards the the screen. Yeah. Everybody watching this, please try this at home. This is actually an occasion where you can say please yeah, yeah, yeah. at home. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I assure you that this works. Yeah. At some position, at some position, the the circle will disappear. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that it's incredible, but in the, this is why um, I like so much vision sciences because there are so many incredible things that you never think uh, that you can imagine that the world, the brain works in this way. Well, let's move on. Visual field is really important for reading. This is an example of an eye tracking analysis of a, a person reading this text. Reading is not scanning letter by letter. It's done by a combination of fixations, which are represented by these circles, and fast eye movements called saccadic movements. And uh, reading a web page is not reading all the web page from top to bottom. When we are visiting a web page, we search uh, for the, the most important information. We make quick scans search, searching for the information of our interest and dodging areas and stimulus that, as, uh, that we assume that are not important. And what is not important in a web page nowadays? Those things that are blinking, that um, have a different design that is not matching the, the web page design, general banners and advertisements. Well, now think about this possibility. Some illnesses cause a loss of the visual field. If it affects the central visual field, this person will have problems for reading because when this person moves his uh, eye gaze to a, a certain position mm, determined by the, mm, the peripheral visual field, is not able to read. This person, for example, can, can go into the street and mm, won't, uh, I, how is it said? It's a need your help, tropezar. How is it said? Uh uh, in, uh, you uh, uh, stumble, stumble upon, stumble. Okay, thank, you. You stumble. thank you. Yeah. This person won't stumble upon any object because the peripheral visual field is correct. But this person can't see faces, can't read text because has lost the central field. Yeah, of course. The other, the only option <clears throat> that this this uh, this person has is to enlarge letters and to um, try to read written text using the peripheral visual field, which has a, a lower visual acuity. So, but, yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt, just one question. I was just no thinking how, how to best implement that on a website. Is that one of those examples where you need two buttons for like regular font size and then the big font size that people with visual impairments can select their, their big font size because otherwise I would assume you would turn off all those people without visual impairments and they would wonder why the font size is ridiculously large. Yeah, um, that's an option, but the other option is to use responsive design and let them to adjust the, 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 the magnification of the, of the, the browser. Control plus yeah. and it enlarges text size, uh, yeah. the size of the text. So for them, I assume that it will be enough. But uh, other option is to lose the peripheral visual field. And this is not uh, a common example. When you are looking for accessibility and visual impairments, usually they speak about the, the central visual field and the, 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 the loss of capacity to read. But when you are losing the peripheral visual field, you face different problems because you can you have a, a good visual acuity. The central field is preserved. You have a good color vision, but you will stumble upon with all the objects in front of you because you can't see those objects. 
But at the same time, you will not be able to read because you can see what you are staring, but you cannot uh, calculate where to jump next to continue the reading. Does it make sense for you? Okay. Yeah. Another option is to have only the half of the of the visual field. And there are so, so, so many combinations and different shapes and different possibilities about uh, visual field loss. But in general, these are the more or less the more the most important because all of them uh, interrupts the, the ability to read in a normal velocity. But what is more important and is in general, except for these effects, in general people enlarge the text to be able to read. But these people in particular, they do not need to enlarge the text. On the contrary, they need to diminish the, 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 the text size to uh, have more letters inside their visual field. So this is the reason why uh, you don't um, you have to to avoid uh, very long sentences. You have to restrict the the the, the amplitude of your sentences to more or less sixty characters or um, more or less this size. You extend your this arm does. and you are this and, size, and, okay. you, and you check your fist. This is so more remember or less the everyone. Optimal. This is more or less yeah. the optimal um, that, that is size for sentences. Our sentences should be at a maximum. Like I put my yeah. fist against the, yeah. the screen. Mm -hmm. that, doesn't that depend on the resolution of the screen and the size of the screen and stuff like that? Because I, I'm on a 4K display, by, uh, for example. I have way more screen real estate, so I would have more... With the higher resolution, I would be able to fit in more characters in my fist length than I would have somebody with the same screen size but with mm -hmm. less resolution. Well, um, yes, but more resolution means more detailed letters. It also means smaller letters. In my case, you can you can you can you can use smaller letters, but because you have more resolution, so you have more options to reproduce properly the letter size. But don't think about um, fitting more letters in a, a in a smaller space. Think about keeping the same size for different uh, screens. So I have to so say that this is something that typography I... again. Sorry, Pat yeah. sorry, teacher. Yeah, responsive typography, but even just the simple thing of not making your lines too long, and this is something that I see all the time, so often. The majority of websites, the lines are way too long. And it's it's also an, it's an attention thing. Even if you mm -hmm. are not visually impaired, you're going to get lost half yep. the way down the line. So, yep. yeah, big totally. recommendation is to keep your lines sh short. Not too short, but short enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too short are also uh, bad practice. It's all because of the, the, the combination of the, the, the properties of the visual field and the eye movements for reading. Let's move on. And so here are the tips related to visual field. First of all, add visual references. And when I am, and with this, I refer to visual landmarks, headings, lines, whatever that helps people to uh, even if they are using big magnifications of the screen to not lose the, um, the context. When we, are, when we are scanning a web page, we pay uh, attention to headings. Why? Because they have a different style. We pay attention to lines, we pay attention to icons. These kind of things are visual references. Very important, design carefully the keyboard focus style. I remember that Rian said that one of the most basic accessibility uh, actions is to check your website with the keyboard, not the mouse. You have to check your website with the keyboard and you have to think about the focus style because it's the visual feedback 
that uh, we get when we are we are navigating a website using our keyboard. If you don't um, give a proper style, it will not be visible for some people. And check your design with at least 200% of zoom or even bigger. Uh, when we are using a responsive website, this is not a problem in general. And for um, people of occidental countries, align text to left. Why? Because the brain um, keeps memory of the, the reference of this left uh, line. So it can move quickly to, towards the beginning of the next line. If we are using w long sentences and uh, centered justifications and these kind of things, the brain mm, have problems in when when it reaches the, the the end of one line and needs to go to the to the next line. Yeah. And last but not least. Let's talk about color perception. There are a lot of myths about color perception, and I'll try to be quick, but um, as clear as possible. This is an example of the Ishihara's test. It's the most famous color vision test. What we see is uh, some dots that try uh, and, uh, and the numbers inside of it. Everybody yeah. sees this one. Why? Because mm, what... Uh, we, there are green dots and orange dots, but these colors have a difference of contrast that matches the minimum contrast required to, to detect colors. But a real test is this one. Can you see anything 42. here? 42. Yeah. I yeah. Could, could be 48 as well, though. It's really the, the 2 or the 8 is really tough for me. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know because I have problems to find the four and I can see the two. Well, okay, so I can see the four clearly. So we match up perfectly. <laughs> yeah, your, your, vision is, your vision is correct. It's correct because uh, this is a photography. This, this test is intended to do it with, um, with calibrated inks under calibrated uh, viewing conditions. So do not worry about the result. But here, the, the thing is that, for example, with my problem, I can see the four, but I can see the two. Another kind of problem, they will detect the two, but won't, won't be able to see the four. Okay? If we how, do, how do we... Oh, wow, those, is, those are tricky. Um, mm -hmm. how, how do we make the most out of this info for designing our websites, though? Is that all coming back to the contrast checker tool that you sh shared earlier? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I lower the contrast of that image, we can't perceive anything. Why? Because the colors on this plate are selected to have more or less the same luminance levels. So they do not contrast in luminance. They only contrast in color properties. If I increase the, the saturation of this plate, I can see clearly the four, and uh, more or less I can see the two. So for my problem, uh, I need more saturated colors. And as you say, Jan, if you think about only the, the, the contrast levels required, that will be more than enough. I will not be able to perceive the difference in color, but I will be able to see difference in, in, in brightness. So the tips about color vision. First of all, do not use color to convey information. Do not say press the red button, press the green button, press the blue button. No. And do not base your design on simulations because simulations are just that, simulations. Uh, my perception does not match the simulations that I have seen and I am anomalous. So the appropriate use of color is to reinforce communication. You have an accept button, you can add uh, a green background. You have a cancel button, you can add a red background, but that's because you have text on the button. 
the most important, respect the contrast values and there will be no problem in reading or using the your design. And remember, each display may show different colors. So don't be so strict with the exact color. And, and also each yeah. each person will probably see a different color than from the one that you think could, could because color really is an opinion. It doesn't really yeah. there's no oh, that's a good equivalence. Point. But yeah. my wife and I fight about color all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, and I did a whole talk centered around the color, the fact that color is an opinion. It, oh, it, that's it just good to it know. really is. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have no fights about color because I trust the rest of the people if they say this is not green. <laughs> okay, it's not green. I trust you. Well, and uh, this was. All the talk. Here are my my Twitter, my 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 web page, and um, I will be more than happy then to answer questions. So um, you can contact me um, through Twitter, for example, and it will be fine. So this was, this was so great, Vicente. Thank you so much. A You're lot welcome, of Peter. information here. You know what? The thing that I love the most about this is the concept of physiology-driven design. I just love it. I, I almost think there should be a book called Physiology-Driven Design. I just I, I really love it. So I'm just I'm going to try and do a, a bit of a uh, summing up of all the points that we touched today because it's been so much. So first of all, we learned a lot about the defects of vision. Then uh, we talked about visual acuity and reading. Then we talked about contrast. And there, there were so many useful tips about all this. So first of all, make sure that you use contrast ratio calculators. I love those. I have, as you were saying, there's many good ones uh, that you can find for free online. So never use color mm -hmm. without doing that. Always check for contrast. Remember that minimum contrast depends on letter size because the, uh, the smaller the letter, the higher the contrast that you need. So this is really important for web design. And visually impaired people usually need higher contrast. So bear them in mind because there are many more visually impaired people than you think there are. Basically, more than 50% of the population on earth has a visual impairment. So it's not just old people. Forget about that. It's not true. So then we talked about uh, color vision as well, uh, but also some, I want to remind some very important tips that we touched on. Uh, always add visual references because we talked about field of vision as well, what we can see and what we can't see without even knowing that we can't see it, the blind spot and so on. So uh, design carefully with the, uh, using the uh, keyboard focus style, so making sure that you can navigate with that. Check your design with at least 200% zoom is the second time that we've heard this tip in the course of these webinars. So it's very important. Align text to the left, which is yeah. my favorite <laughs> thing. Because everyone who knows me knows that I always bang on about uh, aligning to the left in Western countries, as you very important, important yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. It's so important for attention as well. Make sure that your lines are not too long. That's a very basic thing that not everybody uh, thinks about. So you see that us designers, when we have fixations, actually, mostly they are for a good reason. So I'm glad I, I got validated. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then, welcome. Job done. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Perfect. And then a few uh, basic tips on, on color. Do not use color to convey important information. Make sure that it's conveyed in other ways. Do not base your design on simulations. Use color to reinforce communication, but not to convey the whole of the information. And remember color contrast values, very important. And uh, also another thing that I really loved is that of course, unless you're legally blind, we are visual beings. So a vision is our first input. So we need to respect that. And remember, physiology-driven design would be my next, next, uh, next thing. Next Absolutely book. love it. Yes, yes, yes. 
So uh, now we're going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to clumsily going to try uh, and do what Lee does so wonderfully. Uh, Lee, we miss you because he does the final round uh, so wonderfully. Now let's start from our guest, uh, Vicente. You, you, where what can people find you? What, what's your favorite place? You told us Twitter already, but is there another place where people can find you or shall we just go to Twitter? Yeah, um, I prefer Twitter, but I am also on LinkedIn. So if you want to contact me, just look, uh, look for Vicente Sanchez Jurado and uh, you will find me. Perfect. What about you, Jan? For me, it's virtualsummitmastery.com. And for me, just look for me on Twitter where I, I'm a lurker. I don't really, I'm shy on Twitter, but I am there. And uh, LinkedIn, Peach and Eddie, there's only one, so I'm really easy to find. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vicente. It was an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you You're so welcome. much. The person is mine. Great. Oh, shall we do the awkward wave? Let's do it. Yeah, Let's we need wave. to do it. So we all it's have a to tradition. Wave. It's a tradition. I, I am in the it. power to, to have us stop waving. Oh, no, so. stop 